there's this big ass cargo thing and it's it's a drone that's the gist of it Companies are in the process of developing an autonomous technology that are both safe and reliable. And what I, the reason I said, hey, this is a good article is because I wanted to spark the discussion. Is how realistic do you think this is, Donkey? Dude, how, I mean, the, what, the 200 model is a sing, single engine, 500,000 pound airplane. Yeah. Well, it also talks <laughs> about uh, EV, which yeah. I think is, dude, again, as we've proven in the previous segment, we're not the engineering type, but the question I have with EV is it's heavy. Like we yeah. haven't figured out ultra lightweight technology and long range no. and cargo. You want reliable cause you're doing ocean crossings and you want lightweight. So you could put crap back there. You know, Mima's Amazon package right. and Gonky's flip phone have right. to be shipped from China. So we right. need technology. Now, what I will say is where I think the applicability and I think where we're going to start to see autonomous uh, cargo drones, because I think cargo admittedly is going to be the first ones. Like that's the canary in the coal mine because you're going to see single pilot and then no pilot for that. But where I, I think it'll happen, just mover's opinion, is crossing the Pacific. Like because big ocean, right? If we lose one. You know, okay, you lost the packages, it's insured. But like from LA or somewhere on the coast to Southeastern Asia, you know, I mean, or Asia in general, not South, but any, any parts in Asia, like I think that's where you're going to see it initially because that's right. where that's, I mean, that's where you save the most money because you don't need three pilots, four pilots, whatever. Right. And you're flying boxes. And it's, it's uh, it's just long range dead flying, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I I think people will have heartburn flying it over populated areas, you know. So you you may see it like not like LAX, but you may see like a, a cargo thing, kind of like what they were talking about doing. There's a uh, I forgot the name of the, the place outside of Homestead. There's a there's a uh, airfield that's like twelve thousand feet long. We used to use it as our one of our diverts, like in the Everglades. Or there was nothing around it, but it was always like, hey, if you lose an engine, you can go there because it's a 10,000 foot runway or whatever. I think you'll see like an airport like that where it's just drones and it's not around any populated areas and it's got access to the Pacific. And right. I think that's where it's going to start. <clears throat> but I don't yeah, know. What I, do you think? Dude, I think uh, the whole freight, um, you know, Amazon's quest to get you your gadget, like, as soon as possible after you click by, I mean, the drone technology is probably combined with some sort of AI is going to be where it's at. I mean, drones don't sleep, right? I mean, it's, it's coming. <clears throat> the, uh, and I can see some people talking about it in the comments, but like, you know, the, the tough nut to crack is even though like airplanes are highly automated now, they still, the infrastructure that we, uh, have air travel in right now is not designed for automated. Uh, it's things. but it uh, it is getting there because I mean look at the Vision Jet that can you know yeah. declare an emergency and land on its own. Look at CPDLC, which but that technology has been around for decades. But like so the, it's but CPDLC too, right? What is what is that CP? You never use that where um, you don't have to talk to anybody. Like they'll they'll. Uh, like you fly Indy Center and a, a, like there's a lot of center places where they'll pass you like clearances and stuff through your FMS. No, I've you never know, done that. You might. <laughs> really? <laughs> I've done that a lot. We may you have not done. paid for that service. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's even something you pay for, but for us, you know, like how do you get your clearance? Do you call clearance or does it just pop up on your... No, I call really? It. Yeah. You oh, guys yeah. are peasants, dude. Yeah. Poverty. Yeah. It's so funny. Like I always, I always tell him like, you know, IFR to Belleville and are Captain, you serious? Captain's like, you know, we're always IFR, right? I'm like, I know. I just can't break. This are you serious? Head. I had no idea. So, Oh dude. I, yeah. I talked to everybody at the big airlines <laughs> at, at the real, where you were at, <laughs> where you were at. at those places where and you might wear paid a hat money and get paid <laughs> money. It's downloaded to your FMS or FMC. So like you put in, you know, 
KUSA or whatever, it, it, it connects. You got to do all the, the stuff. It connects it, and it goes, It connects with Clarence? Yeah. With I don't ever talk to Clarence. The only time I've ever talked to Clarence really? Delivery is in a foreign country. Yeah. And a, a lot of foreign countries, you don't have to. It's Mexico. And Mexico sucks because you can't understand them sometimes because they start rambling off and you're like, dude, I, what? But anyway, um, yeah, wow. CPDLC. But, and they'll talk to you in flight. You'll talk to the, the ARTCC or whatever the... Uh, and and they'll send you like, hey, clear direct or whatever, and you acknowledge it, and you bing bing. Uh, dude, clearly we're not in the link. So apparently, I have no clue what dude, you're talking. This is no, breaking news by itself that you no, guys aren't using that. No, dude, we, we, we'll get a ride. They'll clear us for an arrival, then they'll change it. And so well, I not an like, arrival, not an arrival. This is like right now. I think they're only doing it with like center frequencies and stuff. But like across the pond too, they're using it for the updates and stuff. Yeah, yeah all the I, satcoms I, and stuff. Mm, yeah, no. I told I just God, he doesn't have this technology. <laughs> Hello, anybody there needs some clearance? Clarence. <laughs> so. That's crazy. I'm yeah. surprised I even remember this. But no, seriously, <laughs> um the technology already exists. Yeah. I mean, look at the so uh when I was at the training center uh when I first started, we had Sims for the A350. We bought a whole bunch of Sims. We were buying the airplanes and then we decided we're not buying the airplanes anymore. So we had the Sims. But I walked into one and the guy's just sitting there, you know, he's messing with something and he's like, hey, check this out. I was like, what? If the that aircraft determines that it has um, a rapid depressurization, all right, so cabin altitude climbs, you know, because it's no longer pressurizing, it will automatically descend and fly the depressurization route and can be programmed to continue fly the approach and land. Does it know if there's a mountain under you? Yes, that's a deep. That's what a depressurization route is. So it's routes in mountainous terrain that you can safely escape and do an emergency descent and then go find a, a, a divert somewhere. It hmm. is smart enough to know. So, dude, I, I don't. The technology is it, the technology is there, but I, I just don't. It's coming. It's not here yet. So to speak. Yeah. <laughs> Close. <laughs> Close. Ouch. Oh my God. Yeah. Donkey's <laughs> airline job is about like my internet just now. <laughs> that wasn't internet. That was computer. That web something's happened. I don't know what that website was doing, but it did not like me or Douglas. Yeah, that it was, was the, the website. The, it crashed my explorer or my own, the, like yeah. Chrome. Chrome. It didn't like Chrome. The Chinese hit record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was what happened and you do drone uh anyway anything else on that one no no it's coming dude i think you're right i think cargo is the canary in the coal mine but i don't think uh people carriers i think they always want a uh, little skin in the game whatever that looks like yeah and i think specifically to this article even though we didn't really talk about it i think their ideas are a little impractical like you talked about single engine ev all that stuff like i think it's going to come in the form of a triple seven Yep. that has been converted or a new, maybe not a clean sheet design, but a variant Revolution. of a, yeah, yeah. A, a variant of a triple seven. <laughs> right. Maybe not Boeing cause they need a yoke, but an, uh, like an Airbus variant, <laughs> something. Um, right. I mean, we're already there, dude. L look at the, may, and it may be, it may be not fully autonomous. It may be a dude in a shack in Las Vegas that is monitoring three or four of them. Dispatch. Yeah, it's a dispatch. It could be dispatch. You've got a ground <clears throat> team that's doing the takeoff and landings that, you know, making sure the arrivals and stuff, they've got eyes on while they land. And then you've got, it hands off to a dispatch and then the dispatch tracks five of them across the Pacific. And then a ground team picks it up when it lands in Shanghai or, well, it won't be there. It won't be, a po I don't think it's going to be populated areas, at least not at first. Flying an airplane without a person in it is is not the hard part at this point. It's the maintaining the link. Yeah, it's that and integrating it into you know the uh, air structure infrastructure that we have. Is that the right word? <laughs> but they already do that with drones, like you know the the Reaper yeah, but, and yeah, but the drone. Yeah, but they're just going to a kill box and doing circles. They're not like oh, dude, they're flying in the airspace because they. they they're going from nope. like they're going from like Newark to LA. No, not in our airspace. 
But that's what I'm just saying. Other like people's that. airspace. Like you, you've never seen like the memes or whatever, or them talking yeah. about how they'll check in with like an Italian controller. Right. And they'll be like, yeah, I'm here. And because they, they won't tell them they're a drone, you know? So right. they'll be like, oh, yeah, we're checking in at 340. Uh, like I saw remote piloted memes on Instagram. They were talking about a drone giving a pie rep. And they thought that was funny. I was like, well, yeah, because there's <laughs> the dude sitting in the container. He has no idea. Yeah. No turbulence here. Uh, Modman says, how would you think ATC would control drone cargo aircraft via the radio? How would the guy behind the radar tell a drone cargo aircraft to change heading and altitude? Uh, Gonky flight 6969, <laughs> turn left heading 340, because it's the same thing as real drones. They're talking to you on the radio. It's just the dude in the container is not co-located with the aircraft that he's flying. Or if it's autonomous, well, AI has speech recognition. and st- I don't think it's going to go to that point. But if it did, either you do AI speech recognition or... Yeah. CBDLC, where you're just sending commands, telling it, you know, you're not talking at all. Because really, over these routes, you're not talking to anybody anyway. Well, I don't know about you, um, but <clears throat> in the world of having to use a mic still and talking on the radio, uh, that's how, at least if I'm flying the airliner, like that's how I get my essay of like people around me because <clears throat> I'm hearing their clearances, I'm hearing their altitudes, their headings and stuff. Yeah. But where I'm talking about is like the the tracks. So these these long international tracks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, not yeah. talking to anybody anyway. You're just <clears throat> on true. the track. That's true. You know, you, you might get position reports, which you can do via the CPDLC, the data link, SATCOM. But you're not really talking to anybody. It, and then when you get in the radar environment, either you'd have a data link to a guy in the container or right. CPDLC. Right. 